Jim, you busy? Good. I want you to go down to the Palermo restaurant. Talk to Manuel or Miguel, whoever it is, runs the place. See if you can find any evidence to give this rape allegation some legs. Otherwise, Mr and Mrs Fisher are going to be sorting this one out themselves. All right, Gov. Marika. Uh, we're back in the DVU, sir. Maggie Fisher wants to make a statement now. Is she up to it? Seems to be, yeah. Right. Well, we better go and see what Abby's got to say. Come on, Tosh. Go. Sir? Well, wouldn't it be better to wait till we've got everything from Maggie? Give you more to go on. How long's that going to take? I mean, Fisher's downstairs now with his brief. They're up to trot. Yeah, but wouldn't it be better if you had the full story, sir? She was asleep. He came into the room. She said no. He said yes. He had his wicked way. That is the story. Her story. I think we should at least hear what he's got to say, don't you? I mean, for all we know, they might have spent a night of passion together. And she's got the ump because he forgot to kiss her goodbye. I hardly think so. Don't you believe it. Number of false alarms we get. Look, we know where he lives, right? So he can't go anywhere. So if Maggie does come up with something to nail him, which I doubt, we can always bring him back in again. Sir. So, Mr Fisher, I'm Detective Inspector Burnside. I'm sorry about all this inconvenience, but uh, a very serious allegation has been made against you. And obviously we have to investigate it. You understand? Yes, of course. You also understand that you're not under arrest. You're free to leave at any time. You also don't have to say anything unless you wish to do so. But what you do say may be given in evidence. Well, my client is keen to cooperate fully with your inquiries, Inspector. I'm well, glad to hear it, Mr Atkin. Well, you're aware I trust that Mr and Mrs Fisher are separated and are currently in dispute over the terms of the divorce. So? Well, obviously, if Mr Fisher were in prison for rape, he'd be at a severe disadvantage contesting any settlement. Ah, oh, right. Interview with Mark Fisher. Those present, Detective Inspector Burnside, Detective Constable Lyons. Also present, Mr Fisher's solicitor, Edward Atkin. 11.38. Right, Mr Fisher, would you like to give us your version of what happened last night and this morning? Well, my wife and I had dinner last night at an Italian restaurant. The Palermo. Who invited who? Um... I can't really remember. It just came up in the conversation on the phone a few days ago. I think she suggested it so we could iron a few things out, and I thought she meant, you know, emotionally between us. And I thought, why not? Give it one last go, you know. So you wanted to get back together again? Quite honestly, before last night, I didn't know. Um, I love her, but, uh, you know. So what happened? We had a nice enough meal, civilised. She was very sweet, really, which surprised me. She can be very... cutting. Anyway, by the time the bill arrived, I realised I'd drunk far too much to drive. We both had, so I said I'd get a cab home. She said that was silly, because I'd have to come all the way back here tomorrow, today, to pick the car up, and that I should doss down at the house. She suggested that you come back? Yes. Go on. Well, I did. We walked home, and she put me in the lounge on the sofa bed, and I went to sleep. And? Well, about six o'clock, I woke up, and I said to myself, this is silly, <laughs> us like this, and I went upstairs. Yeah? I woke Maggie up, and I told her how I was feeling, that we shouldn't be apart. And how did she react to that? Well, she agreed. That you should get into bed with her? Yeah. And then what? My wife and I made love. So you asked him back? Yes. It was ridiculous him getting a cab. I never suggested he was coming back for anything except sleep, alone, downstairs. Even so, cosy meal for two, invitation back to your place. Some people might say you were asking for trouble. They can say what they like. I didn't ask him to rape me. You're not living at home at the moment, then, Mr Fisher? With a friend in Fulham, left a couple of months ago. Left or thrown out? We agreed I should go, give us both some space. So what was the trouble? <laughs> Difficult to say, really. It's all right, I've been there. It's always something, though, isn't it? What was it, money? Not really. No, of course not. You've both got good jobs, haven't you? Who, in fact, uh, earns the most, you or your wife? Is this relevant? Well, I'm just trying to understand your relationship, Mr Fisher. 
You see, you say that your wife agrees to you getting into bed and making love to her, and then she turns around and accuses you of rape because she thinks somehow that's going to get her a better divorce settlement. I didn't say that. I don't know why she's doing this. It's a possibility I've floated, Inspector. And after all, it's not uncommon to try to blacken one's partner in divorce cases, is it? Well, it's a bit strong, though, isn't it? I mean, she must be earning a few quid, working for a city accountants. And you sell insurance? Yeah, I work in financial services, yes. Well, I was just wondering who earns more, just out of interest. She does, now. And do you think this had anything to do with your marriage splitting up? No, and it wasn't why I raped her either. I... I mean, it doesn't mean I raped her either. It's all right, Mr Fisher. I know what you mean. Right, Maggie, just a few points I want to clarify, if you can bear it. This bit where you say it never occurred to you that Mark might come into your room. Yes. Well, playing devil's advocate, I'd say that two people who were once close and have had quite an intense evening... It wasn't intense. Well, you said at one point he told you he still loved you. Well, it wasn't intense for me. As far as I was concerned, we were discussing business. OK, but if a bloke I'd just split up from had told me he still loved me and he'd been drinking and I asked him back to spend the night in another room, OK, but still in the same house, well, it would have at least crossed my mind that he might try something on. He didn't try something on. He raped me. Look, I know Mark. I've lived with him for four years. It never occurred to me he'd do anything like that. To tell you the truth, I didn't think he had it in him. <sighs> Ironic, isn't it? <laughs> That's why I married him. The sex, if I'm honest. His mother thought I was after him for his money. Her boy was going to be rich and successful, apparently. But really, it was just great in bed. Once. I can hardly remember it now. Besides... Well, you're probably going to find out anyway now I've been opened to the world. There's somebody else. Has been for about a year. He was with me the night before Mark stayed. So, if it wasn't the...